Hi, my name is Kelly, your simulation coordinator, and today I'm going to walk you through defibrillation safety and its functions using the LifePak 20E. The LifePak 20E is on all resuscitation trolleys throughout the hospital wards with ED and ICU using the 12 and 15. As per the 2016 Advanced Life Support Algorithm developed by the Australian Resuscitation Council, the defibrillator is to be attached as soon as CPR is initiated. Once the life pack is available, the quick combo pads need to be connected grey to grey, arrow to arrow, and placed on the patient's chest as soon as possible. The pads need to be positioned correctly around the CPR provider. The first pad is to be placed over the second intercostal space, mid-clavicular line, and often you can use the clavicle and sternum as a border for this pad. The second pad which displays the heart symbol is placed closest to the heart, sixth intercostal space, mid-axillary line. Avoid breast tissue and always place the pad underneath the breast. The ARC guidelines recommend that pads are always 8cm away from implantable devices. Anterior-posterior pad placement is also acceptable during this time. Once the defibrillator is attached, we need to prepare for early defibrillation. Turn your life pack on and open the door. This places the defibrillator into manual mode. However, if the door fails to do this, take the lead and push the lead button. This will also convert the machine into manual mode. Jewels are to be delivered as 200, 300 and 360, as per manufacturer's recommendations which can be found on the small sticker above each panel of your life pack. Charging, continue CPR. Okay, pause CPR. We're going to analyze the rhythm. We have VF, a shockable rhythm. So all clear, oxygen away. Stand clear, shocking now. Continue CPR. If a non-shockable rhythm was analysed, we would follow the non-shockable rhythm pathway. Dump the shock with the trim knob and recommence CPR. When do we check for a pulse in advanced life support? If we analyse a ventricular tachycardia, we need to check for a pulse. If we analyse an organised rhythm, we also need to check for a pulse for any return of spontaneous circulation or a PEA. According to the ARC's bradycardia algorithm, patients who do not respond to atropine or at a high risk of asystole may require external pacing. These patients are in a pre-arrest phase and may be experiencing symptoms such as hypotension, shortness of breath, dizziness and or chest pain. The LifePak 20E, as well as the 12 and 15, has the capacity to provide external pacing via the defibrillation pads. Once the decision has been made to pace, you will need to correctly position the defibrillation pads on your patient, as well as the monitoring leads. The pads will initiate pacing and the leads detect the patient's intrinsic rhythm. Once attached, turn the pacer button on and set an appropriate pacing rate using the rate button. This will usually be between 60 to 100. Next, we will set the current. Adjust current up from 0 milliamps until electrical capture is observed on the monitor, which is generally 50 to 120 milliamps, and that should achieve capture on most adult patients. Once capture is observed, increase current by 10 milliamps as a safety buffer and check the patient for a physiological response or mechanical capture. Is there a pulse and how does it correlate to the pacer? How's their blood pressure? Pacing is painful, so prepare for a light sedation and analgesia. Prior to sedation, a neuro assessment is a great tool to use as a baseline particularly as your patient's level of consciousness was compromised during the bradycardia. The 
Before ending this session on pacing, I would just like to orientate everyone to the pause button. Holding down the pause button allows us to view the patient's intrinsic rhythm without terminating the pacing program we have just set. Once we take our finger off the pause button, the program that we have already set kicks back in. Cardioversion can also be performed with your life pack defibrillator. According to the ARC's tachycardia algorithm, if your patient is unstable and has developed a reduced level of consciousness, systolic blood pressure lower than 90, chest pain, shortness of breath, or is poorly perfused, you need to attempt synchronised cardioversion. Connect quick combo pads in the anterior lateral position. Anterior posterior can also be considered for large patients. Turn the defibrillator on, open the door into manual mode and analyse the patient's rhythm. Push Once we have confirmed the need to cardiovert, set the joules by using the energy select button. It is recommended that first attempt cardioversion is set at 50 to 100 joules. As the defibrillator automatically defaults to 200, we will be dialing down. Then press the sync button. This will display inverted triangles on your screen which will indicate your R wave. This prevents us from delivering the shock on the T wave which can cause a VF. Provide sedation and analgesia for the patient and subsequently an airway support person. Once all team members are happy to proceed, ask them to stand clear, charge to 100 joules and press the shock button. In this case, you will have to hold the shock button down for a brief period of time, allowing the defibrillator to deliver the shock on the R-wave marker. The ARC guidelines recommend a maximum of three attempts at cardioversion. Thank you for taking the time to revise the defibrillator and its functions in the context of advanced life support.